Bueno, más cosas, ¿eh? Demasiadas cosas. Sí. Si vas al YouTube de Unite, se supone que... Si puedo Unite tu PC... Good morning. Welcome, everyone. We are glad to be here with you today. And in a few seconds, it's going to start our online webinar. Are you ready for it? OK. We are about to present to you the potential sectors uh, where you can find um, uh, opportunities uh, to work here in Catalonia, Lona. We are looking forward to introduce you all. First of all, we will, go, we will be glad to have with us Mr. Jesus Perez, the responsible of the Unite Alliance in UPC Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome in Barcelona. Pleasure to open the session. We have prepared a very exciting program on uh, the, um, innovation ecosystem in Barcelona somehow. So the title of the seminar is where you are headed, heading Bar uh, Barcelona. And the idea is to, to go through the exciting uh, possibilities that you may find in this area. So um, just let me say a few words about him about the Unite. Unite is an alliance of uh, seven university funded, uh, funding universities, including uh, Alto in Finland, uh, KTH in, in Sweden, uh, Darmstadt in, in Germany, um, Grenoble in France, um, uh, Torino in Italy, the uh, uh, University of Lisbon, and ourselves, uh, Technical University of Catalonia. So, uh, as you see, uh, we are scattered through all uh, the country, and we are working on having alliance that permits mobility of students and staff throughout Europe, creating an atmosphere that uh, may become eventually a pan-European university. Uh, uh, UNITE has several aims connecting all the areas in, uh, at the UNITE, uh, specific, specifically increasing mobility, having um, digital tools for increasing teaching and learning process um, to create a school spread over Europe, and, and of special importance for the um, session we have today, regional involvement and innovation where all the different um, innovation ecosystems are connected how in such a way that um, staff still move over the different regions. Uh, we have to also a governance and we have support services that uh, look at the look for the improvement and helping students to to get their graduation. As I said, we have an exciting program behind in front of us. I would like you to relax and enjoy the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan Jesus. And now, thank you for this very comprehensive brief explanation about the UNITE Alliance. Uh, I am to introduce you Mrs. Nuria Garrido. She is the Vice President of UP, uh, UNIT in UPC. Okay. Thank you, Bernice. Thank you, 
all for attending this session. Um, I think I have some. Yeah, okay. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Noria Garrido. I am a professor and researcher here in UPC. And at the moment, I am a president of UPC alumni. So what is UPC? Um, as you know, UPC alumni is a program from UPC created to help and support our alumni to develop personal and professional, professional lives and of promote the sense of belonging of the UPC graduated, uh, graduates to the community of this universe. And how doing it? So, doing by means of a community, we all belong to a community of alumni who support each other and support diversity to uh, achieve their goals. Yeah, sorry. Ah, okay, thank you so much. <laughs> and community, we really think that this community must be connected, must be alive, and now more than ever, must be national. So let's take advantage of UNITE. And let's um, share our knowledge about the um, um, sectors most promising in Barcelona just to improve the careers of our uh, students. Um, yeah, so you know, I'm not, well, okay, don't worry, I think it goes itself. <laughs> um, Julie Bonnet, who is a um, UPC alumni staff, our program UPC alumni, will explain you all the C's and possibilities that UPC alumni can offer you in order to improve your professional careers. Um, but now, um, let me just explain the goals and the objectives of this session. Because if you are considering to come to Barcelona, to Catalonia, to, and of course you want to know which are the sectors that generate more job opportunities here in Barcelona or Catalonia. So these are the goals of this precisely. Identify and present the future trends in terms of business demand and the attraction of talent in Antuk Catalonia. And well, this look to this future, in fact, as a uh, to the need to improve our of insertion to labor to job market, which are really high in the UPC. As you know, more than 90% of our the students of our students find job related to their students in less than three months. So it's not the explanation for this stage, but we want to um, the economy, industry, and services in an environment of respect for sustainable and in terms of social responsibility. So which are sectors? Because as you know, UPC alumni has been working for a time uh, to orientate our students our alumni in, um, to help to develop their professional, as I said before. So that's why we have a deep knowledge of, her, of which are the main trends on the labor market in Barcelona or in Catalonia. And well, we want to share it with you. Later, our experts will explain more deeply um, key sectors. But now, let me just, in some of them. OK. Yeah, uh, you can read it in the slide. Uh, but the future trends of the present that are generating more job opportunities in region in Barcelona or in Catalonia. So you can read artificial inter um, yeah, robotics 4.0, Internet of Things, urban smart, assisted vehicle, biomedicine, bioengineering. So there is a whole list of areas of really interesting and exciting where UPC can offer you uh, the programs, master, PhDs, and also um, well, job opportunities at the end of the day. That's why we want to explain to you. 
So, well, let me finish here. I don't want more because I think that the most interesting is what our experts are going to explain us later. Now, so please, uh, Berenice, if you want to come with our panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Julia. Now we will go for uh, another short and quick presentation of uh, Mr. Vilalta. Mr. Xavier Vilalta comes from Axio Service. Uh, let me uh, introduce you properly. He is responsible for smart city innovation and international marketing. That's a very interesting in Catalonia. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the UNAT network, a pleasure to be here, uh, telling you a little bit about how we from the development agency, ONIA, Axio, uh, view technologies and the sectors here in Barcelona uh, for the next uh, coming years after which creates opportunities, of course, for professionals, engineers. We have been uh, doing some uh, search on macro tendencies, studies, and um, you know, there's a lot of them. Uh, we've tried to adapt what we have found in terms of in, uh, and well done research to our region. We've been collaborating, especially of uh, uh, let's say technology transfer institute, BioCAT, BioCAT, and Eurocat, along with a consultant called Anthos Labola. Uh, this is what we are going to see: the big mega global mega trends. That was that was the beginning of the years. and uh, you can see here a little what I'm talking about: uh, the big that. Uh, condition what sectors, what the industrial sectors, what the economy sectors are uh, in the future, in the near future and in the present. Uh, of course, we, we see from, uh, from growth, uh, democrat, uh, demographic growth um, to urbanization, to climate to the problem of resources, the scarcity of risk to, of course, technological change, technological advances, realization, uh, of course, reindustrialization, a big deal, still regions uh, of Europe and elsewhere, health, changes in the global economic power, go through each of them because it's not relevant at this moment, uh, but all of them condition what we can find in the next or we've uh, found in our target and last but not least consumer consumer behavior change in consumer behavior uh, the, uh, the the following analysis has been on this where is money going uh, where is money of direct investment foreign direct investment uh, that has to deal or that deals with technology uh, with technology that has an of heavy technology of and we see here the main investments that we've been uh, mapping the world in the last years as you see here the uh, well well known names Others not so much, but in any case, the usual suspects in terms of countries, the US, China, Canada, India, and the uh, main Indian countries. Apart from that, we've been looking at where was the investment going in terms of startups. And this is a little bit the result. If startups, we are not focusing on names, we are focusing on sectors. In each of these countries, the investment money, uh, focusing technology, uh, going or to which sector is going in each of the countries. And we begin to see here some differences. You see here, 
biotech is clearly the first one in biggest investment uh, market in the U.S. Uh, it's also as well in uh, in. But we see here, for instance, in Europe, how uh, the first investment goes elsewhere. Uh, in the case of uh, Israel, artificial intelligence is the third in uh, the second, excuse me, in the U.S. Uh, but in the rest of the Europe, we see fintech, artificial intelligence, we see e-commerce, we see uh, a little bit of everything, okay? So that gives us another uh, hint of uh, how things are going internationally. But not least, we've, analyzing, we've been analyzing a little bit the pins, which are the countries that uh, promote that patent that has more activity to prote uh, protection in their property. And uh, China, US, Japan, South Korea, Germany, France, etc. Uh, Spain is uh, there, I think, is the 20th uh, um, ranking. Uh, so that's this aspects, these international investment patterns. We get our, our technology trends analysis from these patterns and uh, uh, from uh, what we've seen for that. We've four big, what we call cornerstones. On 13, it's belonging to these four cornerstones and to finally 50 technology trends. Again, remember that this is our analysis. You, you can have as much as you want, but our, let's say, focus has what is important for the Catalan economy, for our region, and our region, which is a very uh, export-oriented region, I know. Uh, so these technology trends include pure technology one. We can talk about, for instance, connectivity, 5G, 6G, or LoRa. But we can also talk about, say, hybrid type of uh, concepts. Uh, we talk about drones is not a technology in itself, but uh, a sector or a subsector that deals several technologies that can be new materials that of course telecommunications aeronautics etc so we mix a little bit uh, concepts as you will see uh, and this well in fact this would be our okay but we prefer to organize it this way because it's here to to talk and to uh, to comprehend as you see the four big axes are green transformation, digital society, health, called industrial resilience or industry four points. And we could go one by one to the different, let's say, axes that you see uh, at the other side of these lines from water energy and circularity in the in transformation, digitalization, new digital economy, uh, digital society, uh, advanced industry, mobility of the future, processes, materials on the industrial resilience, and uh, emerging therapies and medical technology on the health area. And from each of them, we, or we advance to the 50 technologies that we consider our targets, the our targets for Axio, again, is the competitiveness agents of the government of Catalonia. So we deal with companies. We help companies to get into these technologies if they are to promote the technologies, if they are in the phase acquiring them, and to accelerate the acquisition of these technologies. And that's a nicer picture, but probably more difficult to, to read. So these technologies impact on the different sectors. This is important for us because here we are going from the technological analysis to the economic uh, development analysis, if we move. Okay, those sectors would be 
our sectors of choice in what we call the risk free uh, strategy the um, strategy that the european union asks the region to have in order to prioritize their sectors. Uh, as you, many of you know uh, uh, the uh, help of the european union especially the help goes to regions when they fit previous selection of uh, sectors. That was our uh, selection of sectors based on the reality in Catalonia, food, chemical, industrial systems, design, health, mobility, and, and experience-based industries. And we apply all these three sectors to the different uh, targets that we've had before. So that's a little bit how we close the selection. And then we need to estimate which one is growing, which one is so much, in order to make our choices again and our utilizations, our ranking of what can we do, we do for each of them. And this is a little bit the mix. We see here in each of the four big sectors, in this case, um, we're talking uh, about the um, society axis, of course. Which one of them are growing, or we expect to be growing, uh, goes until 2025, but this is based on the inf we've gathered uh, from all these different research we've been analyzing. So, all in all, as you see, the big growth goes to IoT, to photonics, to cloud and space. That would be, for us, the four sectors in the area of technology that have the biggest growth in the last years and in the coming future. If we go to the resilience, we see that the self drive vehicle and the electric vehicle are by far sectors that are very, that we expect to see a lot of growth. Of course, semiconductor and how uh, keeps being uh, very important are the two, but especially vehicle, electric and uh, self-driving are going to be big for that. Uh, if we go to the, earth, to the health, Definitely, and by bioengineering and regenerative medicine, the area where we expect to see that, where we have seen and we expect to see the most of the activity and growth, talking about growth, here, okay, and also what we digital health. On green transformation, see, Clean energy is uh, by far, by very, very far, the, the sector that attracts most of the activity, most of the growth. Sorry, not a surprise for uh, anybody. And uh, how that would, be, that would be the analysis in terms of, of both. We have another analysis that deal with uh, what we call shares. Uh, we understand that most of you, most of us uh, value not only companies or more and more, not only companies because of the results, but because of the, uh, of how approach the goals of humanity. And uh, we began to talk about uh, what we call the deep tech, what everybody talks about the deep tech, and there are different definitions on that, okay? Feel that these deep tech technologies help the of society in terms of mixing the new revolution in science with the sectors that we've been talking about in technology. So these uh, advanced material, quantum computing, drones and rock chain, Photonics and electronics, artificial intelligence and biotech are for us the uh, deep tech sector that link perfectly or mostly uh, science uh, and 
of course, academia as well, but science, the tendencies in technology and companies. And, uh, well, we feel that these sectors, uh, this link, uh, science, deep tech, technology, provoke that these uh, technologies with a purpose are the ones that uh, help society to tackle the ODS, the SDOs, the, uh, the SDOs of the United Nations. Um, what's the potential in Catalonia for all of that? The final uh, presentation, uh, the final my presentation. Well, we have a next generation funds from the EU channeled through uh, the different central in Europe that uh, focuses the different areas and some of them, I think it's 15 out of the 22 that are really focusing ex what we have been talking before. So, what, uh, what I that it seems that, uh, I wouldn't say fine, but uh, we are targeting and the European is targeting the same technologies that we are finding as opportunities here in Catalonia. We've created this uh, Digital Innovation for Catalonia uh, hub. This is a new uh, organization that we are presenting and we hope that the European Union funds all this initiative which brings together different actors to help digitalize the companies here in Catalonia. So that's the fund, another source and fun source of um, activity to companies that are doing this digitalization process. And uh, we see that such activities by our regional government or by uh, some organizations are not the government but are stakeholders in the, uh, eco the technological system goes to the areas. So that a little bit would be the mix between what we are already doing, what we are proposing in terms of government and ecosystem with the analysis of technologies that we've seen before. And how many companies are there? That's uh, one of the last one. Uh, here we focus the different strengths of Catalonia in terms of companies. You see here the number of companies and the, and the uh, turn of the sector in Catalonia. Okay. And how it mixes with the different things that we found. So we see, for instance, here few companies and almost no turnover in the quantum uh, area, but as you know, some uh, institutions, some um, big force, some research force that deal this area. So we expect this to grow, although yet there are no problems, of course quantum is you know, at the forefront of this moment, but then we expect that this research skills go towards the creation of companies. In this case, e-commerce, we have quite a number of companies and we have a turnover, but, uh, well, that creates a, a different scenario. We have here companies, have turnover, and the technology is there and interesting. In circular economy, we have more companies than turnover, etc., etc. All this report available at our website, so and it's a full report. So I recommend you to, uh, if you're interested, to 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 try to to load it because it's uh, full in uh, in English, Catalan, and that will be mostly my presentation. Although, of course, a little bit about our priorities as agency at this moment is not that much important, but this is selection as an agency, okay? Uh, we've had to choose in the different uh, area which one we consider important for us, and this is where our efforts are going to be focused.
Well, let me just. This is the mix of our technologies or our technologies of choice. Okay. And that's pretty much all. Thank you so much for attention. Or uh, maybe come and uh, think about uh, um, setting up your company here, for example. Now, I will be glad to introduce Mrs. Esther Piñol. She's project manager in, for international talent attraction in the, um, in the Barcelona Digital Talent. Welcome. Thank you so much, Jorenis, and thank you, Unite, for having Barcelona Digital Talent today. I'm Esther Pinola, as Berenice said, and I'm the project manager for uh, attraction, um, talent attraction, um, international talent attraction, as you all uh, seeing us today are. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give you some data on why you should come and study here at the Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. Is it working? Takes a while. Sorry for the technical problems, always. Can, may I use some help? <laughs> oh, there you go, thank you. So I'm just gonna give you a bit of overview of what the, the digital sector, the ITC sector, um, unemployment, some data related to that. To that. Um, as you can see, the ITC jobs have, been, have, go have grown six times more than the total employment in the last decade. So definitely working on try uh, studying in the digital, digital um, studies, it's, it has a lot of future and potential. And I'm giving you some, some data. As you can see, in the last eight years, the total employment grow almost 7%, but the ITC specialities grow by a 40%. So it's definitely you know, a career path that has a lot of future. Oh, sorry. I'm definitely not doing a very good job here. Okay, there you go. Some more, um, some other data. Uh, a new post-pandemic mobility scenario, uh, it means that now we all know that we can work from home a lot more. Um, so that created a lot of opportunities. And we are seeing that people are using to work from home, but they're also using to move to other countries. The countries that they're attracting more um, digital uh, talent are Canada, United States and Australia. But Barcelona is in the ninth place of the people that they decided to be digital nomads and to work where from. Some other interesting data, it's where the people that decide to move to Barcelona came from. So the first one, they, I guess Brexit play, play a part on that. Uh, a lot of them came from London, and then we have an internal mobility from Madrid. But as you can see, we get uh, people from all over the world that decide to move to Barcelona to work in the digital sector. Some other data, that's very interesting and very appropriate. Um, Catalonia has some of the best um, ITC um, tech universities in the world. Actually, uh, the international rankings place uh, Universidad uh, Politécnica de Catalunya in the top three, uh, 100 percent, uh, no, 100 <laughs> um, universities in the world. So here we are in the sunny Barcelona. So it's a good, it's a very good place to come and study. And some more you know, data about Barcelona and the most demanded jobs and programming languages. So why I decided to put the programming language is just, if you come to study here in Barcelona, you'll know what you <laughs> better study to get a, a job later on. But let's go on the, um, which are the digital professionals more um, with actually more demand, but less professionals because there's a scarcity of digital talent here in Catalonia, Barcelona. So as you can see, web development, and I would like to link that with the data that Xavier gave previously. As you could see, we have a lot of e-commerce, so we, have, we need a lot of people that they do web development uh, here to work for. And then we also have um, plenty of um, cybersecurity. Um, actually, there's a lot of scarcity, but we, uh, we are in demand of big data, business intelligence, etc. Also, I would like to highlight which are the languages, the uh, the stacks that they are most in demand right now in Barcelona are Python for data engineering, data analysis, big data, business intelligence, JavaScript, you know, uh, to create mostly webs and apps, and also PHP, again, the e-commerce. It is still uh, very strong in Catalonia, Barcelona. So some other uh, interesting data is that um, even though the, you'll see the data here in the next one, 
in Europe, um, the women are only a 19.5 of the total of the digital professionals. In Barcelona, Catalonia, women are the 29%. So if you're a woman, uh, you're thinking about moving um, to study here in the UPC, it's, a, it's definitely a right place. So you can see there's plenty of opportunities for women in tech professionals. Also, I would like to show you some data about the number of total digital professions that they've, as you can see, they have steadily, steadily grown in the last years. And it's obviously um, a, future, uh, a future sector. As I was saying before, the digital, the, the gender gap, it's, it, it's big in the ITC sector, but do we, we are doing a good job here in Barcelona. And I would like to also highlight about the salaries. That's a big thing about Barcelona and Catalonia, because most of you are from countries where um, the salaries are higher. But actually, maybe uh, the digital sector is a bit of a, um, it's a bit different here in Barcelona because it pays more than the other, the total of the kinds of unemployment. And I'm going to give you examples. The average um, salary start kind of a starting two years experience um, um, salary of in Barcelona, it's around 37K. In London, of course, it's a lot higher, but also the, the rent and the quality of lives in London is not, um, it doesn't have the parallelism with Barcelona. So um, I would like to, to kind of go finish, but I would like to highlight also that despite rent is high in Barcelona, it's getting um, some control, uh, government control lately, but not extremely successful, but we are trying. Um, it's far better than cities like in London. And the quality of public services, healthcare in particular, public transportation, education, are comparable to those in Paris or Amsterdam. And here you can see some data. Um, to support these uh, um, affirmations. So just to summarize, to summarize, sorry, why it's a good idea to come and move to Barcelona to study in the Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. First of all, uh, some of the best universities are in Barcelona according to international rankings, in particular the Politécnical of Catalonia. There's a perfect balance of quality of life, salaries and quality jobs here in Catalonia. International community is high. 33% of Barcelona citizens are from abroad, so you'll never feel alone. You always have, you know, a compadre um, here to, to go and uh, hang out. And finally, there's an increasing demand of digital jobs, and a lot of international tech companies are landing here in Catalonia. So thank you so much, and I think later we'll have a Q&A if you have any questions. I would like just... Here is the link to our digital reports that we do every year at Barcelona Digital Talent. Thank you so much. Really, thank you very much, Esther. That was also super interesting. Really, if you're in the ICT area, definitely you should come to Barcelona. You have seen a lot of uh, motivations why coming to Barcelona. And now I give the floor to my colleague, Julie Bonet. He comes from the UPC alumni service. He's a career advisor advisor there and he's let's say uh, touching the reality trying to help our students our alumni to find their way and he is going to explain us how does UPC offer opportunities and attract talent in those sectors Julie presentation please okay. uh, it's interesting to know uh, the structure of the UPC but mm, this um, this kind of structure explain uh, how we give services we have um, a long a large presence in Catalonia with uh, 18 teaching centers uh, in, in nine campuses okay and uh, mm, this structure um, uh, explains that some services are offered from each center and others are offered from central units. Okay. In, in concrete, career services 
offers um, different ways to um, edge students and alumni to give a job, to, to, serve, to find a job. Uh, this is the, the different services what we offer, personalized advice, uh, individual interviews, uh, workshops um, for job searches, success, or uh, develop competences, skill, skill competences, uh, mentoring programs, job boards, employment forums, and activities with companies. In personalized, uh, personalized advice, uh, we offer career guidance uh, to, to alumni and students. Uh, for example, sorry, uh, we offer advice on employability analysis, balance of skills, job search planning, definition of professional goals, etc. And workshops uh, are group sessions uh, to design job search strategies, uh, learn about the operation of selection processes and develop transversal skills. We have two kinds of, of workshops. Uh, one, one kind is uh, related to job search technical. Uh, for example, um, um, get your resume ready, uh, LinkedIn the essential tool for finding a job, um, strategies, strategies for successfully overcoming a start selection process, etc. And in professional skills or personal skills, uh, we have uh, workshops about uh, teamwork techniques, uh, communication, communication skills, um, lead people and projects, etc. Okay. And also we have mentoring programs. This is an experience that is growing. Um, the first mentoring program is uh, M2M. Um, it's, a, it's a mentoring program um, um, sorry. It's a mentoring program in, in, impulsed by um, uh, the club of Polytechnical Women. And this is um, in this picture you, get, you see uh, um, um, I am um, a mentor. The, the woman in the in the left is, is a mentor. She works uh, in a, in an industry, and the left is, is a student. And the the objective of this program is uh, um, along one course. Um, Aid the, the students or alumni to um, to improve your abilities, develop your career, etc. Okay. Uh, the second program that it's uh, it's running, it's uh, into me. Uh, this is related to to School of Engineering of, of Barcelona, and there are some projects that develop similar programs, but there are um, uh, there are running. Okay. Also, we offer job boards. Uh, here we can see um, the structure that I explained in the first uh, slide. Uh, we have one job board centralized for recruitment offers that is uh, managed by UPC alumni. And each school has a job board for uh, offers that for internships. Okay. Uh, this is... Um, the structure of the UPC and other activity that that we organize uh, are job fairs. Job fairs, I am sure that in at university there are similar uh, events, and it's a good um, good uh, occasion to uh, contact with companies and know their activity. Uh, participate in, in workshops, seminars, etc., and making it working with uh, with companies related to to our activity. In concrete, at the UPC, 
uh, we organized uh, seven, 17 uh, company forums. Okay, yeah, um, we um, organize also uh, out of the of the of the um, out of the forums, not related to the forums, activities with with companies um, organized by schools and UPC alumni. Some, sometimes, um, for example, in the in this in this image, you um, you can see. Uh, uh, and an event organized by UPC alumni and the School of Industrial Engineering of Ter and Aeronautical of Terrassa. And uh, this kind of, of, of activities um, um, it's this in concrete is to present a um, program to, um, to, to, to recruit talent uh, students in, in, in large schools. Okay, and other activity mm, not um, directly related to or nor um, not, not directly related to 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 mm, search for jobs, uh, but important is the uh, organization in clubs and chapters alumni. There are different clubs. Some clubs are uh, are in, in are um, are in the schools, school club schools. Other clubs, uh, the the even what 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 uh, what. Um, are organized around a theme, for example, a uh, uh, women's club that I cited once, uh, and a structures club, um, architectural club, etc. And um, another kind of clubs are the chapters. The chapters are uh, international. At this moment, there are uh, two chapters um, running, okay. And the last, um, and the last way that we offer to to aid the students is a uh, UPC alumni launch program. This is a program that offer um, to students in latest courses uh, the opportunity to assist to international universities to, for example, to make a final degree master or a final degree or master thesis. Uh, and the interesting of the program is that uh, uh, the students uh, um, only have to return the similar um, amount of the, of the loan. Uh, and it's not, they not, don't have to return um, after um, they finish your project, okay? And the, the, the program um, uh, um, the program don't finish the, the money um, the money don't finish because uh, the students return mm, the loans. Okay. Uh, and to finish, thank you for your, for your assistance. Yes. And if you are interested in further information or have any questions, you can write to us at uh, Carreras Professionals. Mm, uh, after the, the session, uh, we, can, we send to you the presentations and it's important to register in the, in the form. Thank you very much for this very practical information, Julie, about the services that you're offering in the UPC alumni service, uh, not only to UPC students, but also to some 
maybe to some United students from our partner universities that may want to come to Barcelona to develop their personal career, professional career. Uh, well, but maybe you're not interested in being hired and coming to work to Barcelona like this by a company. Maybe you want to start up your company here in Barcelona or you have an idea of a company and you don't know how to develop it. So how to proceed? Well, we have a clue here. We have a service that could help you. The service is called UPC Empren, UPC Entrepreneurship. And I'm glad to have here with us today, Mr. Xavier Staran. He's an entrepreneurship uh, manager, but also promoter of entrepreneurship in UPC. Welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Berenice. And thank you for attending this afternoon online. Uh, this session. So, as Berenice said, the objective of the following 10 minutes is to have a, a generic overview of the reality of entrepreneurship in Catalonia, in our region, and specifically to see how from UPC, from Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya, we assess students and recent graduates to start their own business. So, I just have some initial figures that somehow complement the previous presentations regarding what's the um, so, some figures, what's the reality of, of entrepreneurship activity at, at, in Catalonia? So these are statistics from last year, where we ended up with almost 2,000 startups in Catalonia and almost 20,000 entrepreneurs or, or people involved in, in, in those startups. So um, you will see many rankings, many different um, studies that said that says that uh, Catalonia and specifically Barcelona is one of the top hubs nowadays for starting uh, a business. And this is related to different factors. Sometimes it's about, as you see in the, in the second um, image, uh, because most uh, startup founders consider Barcelona as, uh, as a good option that's ranked in, in, in second position. Also because there's a lot of funding and you have some additional information in the next slide regarding access to investment. So last year we ended up by be being the fourth hub in, in amount of funding raised by, by startups. And then also regarding some, some technologies and some sectors related to these startups. We have uh, quite a lot of uh, deep tech mm, related companies and then more specifically companies working on AI and big data uh, as, as an example. So, um, well, as a starting point, just to highlight that Barcelona is becoming more and more uh, a good hub for startups and even for companies that are scaling, are looking for additional funding and somehow to, to reach new, new markets. So regarding these uh, statistics, uh, I must say it, I must say that in Barcelona, you find a lot of options regarding public administration support. You have the Barcelona City Council with a specific service called Barcelona Activa. You have the services of Axio that Xavier already presented. You have some specific activities over there. Then you also have this big group of venture builders or um, initiatives that promote and help um, to start a business. Sometimes even without having an idea, you can reach them and they um, help you make a team find the right project and, and go on. So we have some examples here, some private uh, funded and some public, such as Collider, related to the Mobile World Capital Initiative that is uh, specifically targeting deep tech uh, solutions. Then you have this big group of incubators and accelerators, again, initiatives that help once you have decided to start a business in different stages. Sometimes it's right at the beginning, Sometimes it's right when you, you have something to show, a first version of your product, and you need some support to, to grow. So you have, again, some public examples, such as the Glorias Incubators, related to Barcelona Activa, and then some private um, initiatives, uh, such as Seed Rocket and, and Connector. And finally, you can find uh, also associations, okay? So mm, different options, such as uh, Tech Barcelona, which is a big hub of um, digital startups and also um, entities, private and public entities, also corporations working together to um, help Barcelona be that uh, hub that, as we have seen uh, before, is, is becoming as a reference for startups uh, all over the world, specifically in the south of, of Europe. Then you have the 40s from now, which is more known as a Congress, as an event 
uh, that gathers a lot of startups and investors related to the Mobile World Congress. But uh, it's not only that, it's a sort of an association that works and, and, and tries to, to make a, a good dynamism among startups all over the year. And then specific uh, initiatives such as NetMentora, where there's a specific uh, chapter in Catalonia, NetMentora Catalonia, uh, to help uh, through mentoring some of these startups. So after this uh, introduction, let me just go very briefly through our own services at UPC regarding entrepreneurship. We have this specific program called Emprend UPC. Um, it's important to know that uh, at UPC we've been working, helping entrepreneurs for more than 20 years already, almost 25. And of course, our services have evolved. Right now, we have this specific brand called Emprend UPC which targets uh, students and recent graduates with uh, projects in an initial stage of development. Maybe an idea, maybe something like a pre-seed stage uh, startup. And what do we offer them? So basically services, specific activities, and uh, additional resources. As um, Julie said, important to understand that as UPC, as Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya, we have presence in different um, territories, not only Barcelona, so we are spread all over Catalonia, so also our services are in all those, those campuses that you see in, the, in that slide. So, um, well, the type of service or support that we provide is quite standard. We try to adapt to the needs of each company, so basically it's going from product development to helping them define and validate their business model, to help them complement the team. That's also quite common in our startups since they come from a technical background. They need some support in order to address more um, business um, issues. So that's why we also have agreement with some business schools. Barcelona is a, also a reference in, 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 in the number and the quality of some of our business schools, such as ESE, ESARE, EADA, etc. So we work with them to match these uh, profiles. We also help our students and recent graduates to access public and private funding for these startups. We help them go through the IP and go to market strategies, contact with all sorts of stakeholders, and then finally some support in, in legal issues and, and promotion. And regarding activities, we have like big topics here. We have some activities regarding non-formal, non-official uh, training. We also uh, work with a lot of subjects from different schools, um, more than 24 subjects currently where we are supporting and providing an, ad need, an additional perspective regarding innovation and entrepreneurship. Then we have like uh, contests and, and challenges and, and finally some activities regarding networking and, and others. I just um, wanted to show you this image of um, uh, Spice Empren, which is one of our main resources. I, I, I talked about activities, about services, and then about uh, resources. So this is one of the main resources that we offer to our, our startups, these uh, facilities, these uh, workspaces where they share with other entrepreneurs and, and somehow they build this community of startup funders um, related to, to UPC. And how do we do it? So we are a bunch of people here working, trying to help all these startups. We have our main UPC team on the left, si on the left side of the screen. But then we've been building a strong network of mentors, those in, in gray. And finally, we are adding to this network of mentors or experts in certain areas. We are adding a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, people that has gone through that process that are somehow more experienced and that can uh, offer additional support to new entrepreneurs. So um, some statistics just for you to know, to have an idea the type of projects that we are helping. Currently we are uh, working with 70 projects, that's on average. Uh, so we are uh, constantly entering or working with new startups and uh, letting um, companies that are mature enough to, to leave our facilities, our services, and go through to additional programs or, or activities that might be more relevant at, uh, at a new stage where, where they have to grow or they have to address uh, additional issues. So that's the type of companies what, where we work with. Um, most of them are initial stages, as I said in the beginning, but more specifically, some of them just have an idea. Some of them are working on an initial uh, prototype. Some of them have even an MVP or something that can start 
working and trying to validate their business model and, and also some have a commercial product and are even monetizing it. So regarding these projects, almost 200 students and recent graduates nowadays involved and most of them students from UPC but also recent graduates and also um, students from other universities or external to, to ours. I, I must say that here we consider as UPC students also Erasmus students and some sort of you know mobility students from other from other uh, universities and just a few examples since uh, 2015 where we started working through this Empren UPC specific program we have helped to create more than 50 companies and I must say that some of them are doing pretty well that's important because at the end our goal is not only to help uh, startups uh, to get created and, and start their activity but we want to see them grow so at the end is uh, about uh, helping um, to, to launch new ventures with uh, the aim of being scalable and doing properly. And we have uh, some examples already, as I said, such as these three startups that have raised uh, quite a lot of funding already, Going, which is a fintech solution, um, almost 10 million do dollar, uh, euros sorry, uh, already. Cleveria, which is an insure tech company, also raised a fund recently of uh, 5 million euros. And finally, this more deep tech related company called Finboot, working in, in, in the blockchain, let's say, sector or technology, he also has, has uh, raised uh, quite a lot of funding. I mean, that's not mm, an indicator of these companies uh, performing well, but I must say that it's a good uh, reference in terms of, you know, there's a lot of people uh, thinking that these companies might evolve properly and that's why they they want to invest. But at the end, uh, we want to see them, you know, hire people, grow in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, well, their, their main metrics, but that's, that, me, that must be also related to um, the type of uh, impact they generate in, in, our, in our territory in, in Catalonia. So um, that's why I was saying before that for us it's important to not only help companies start their activity but also to, to grow. Uh, within the Unite network we are already working in some specific activities such as uh, this We Unite Startups program that we run together with Alto, KTH and, uh, and Lisbon, okay, those three universities. So we decided to do some specific sessions to uh, provide support to companies that were in, in a specific stage where they were considering to move to other markets, where they wanted to gain some visibility there. So that's why we decided to structure this four session on, on, on thematic fields. And that was uh, run by the end of uh, last year. But we are working constantly and thinking on new initiatives, on new incentives for those companies that want to, to grow. And a couple of examples just to end up, um, because I mean, as, and Plan UPC, we are not only working, providing support to this uh, new creation of, um, with um, to the new creation of startups, but we also want to to manage specific programs that might be strategic, not only for UPC but also for Catalonia. So these are two examples here. We we run and we coordinate as UPC the EIT Euro Mobility Accelerator. So currently the applications are open. So if anyone has a uh, mobility related startup that could be a good option for them you still have a, a week to apply and and the idea here is to provide you with some sort of support specifically for this type of companies also access to to private funding and finally the SABIC the European Space Agency incubator that uh, will be ubicated in in Barcelona or close to Barcelona and uh, also will be coordinated by by us by UPC so this will be launched in in a few months so just keep uh, connected or in case you are interested we can provide you with some additional information and these are two final examples at the end what we look for as startups is to have some exit in terms of you know selling your company or getting uh, not only acquired but maybe going going public through an IPO so um, since you have many players involved within the business and with different purposes um, you, you have to look for something similar to these two examples here these two companies were started or were run by uh, UPC alumni and that's the type of uh, as I was saying, the type of result that you aim to as a startup. So the case of Billings that was acquired a couple of years ago by, by Apple 
And that's also important because uh, Apple, through this acquisition, decided to create an AI uh, strategic center in Barcelona. So that's the type of you know uh, impact that you generate with these companies, and not specifically for the founders that they did pretty well with this with this sale, but also for for the region. And then a second example, which is Wallbox, that's more recent. That's um, a company that uh, manufactures um, mm, electric vehicle chargers. They went public. They were listed in the New York Stock Exchange last year with a valuation over 1,000 million euros. That's what we call a unicorn. And that's also an example of a startup um, run by uh, UPC alumni. Enrique Asuncion was in charge of that company. And it's also uh, a case of success. And Willings and Wallbox, um, I mean, it, there are not only good examples of startups, but we want to somehow provide the, um, our new strategy as, as, as Emprend UPC program wants to become more a network. We want to connect um, our existing offering with some additional services or additional uh, players such as uh, Enrique and, and the founders of, of Billings that uh, will become members of our, of our network of uh, mentors in, in, in the short term. So that's what we aim for. That's all. You have our contact information as well, in case you have additional questions, in case you are interested to know more about UPC and entrepreneurship, and feel free to reach us at any time. Thanks. Thank you very much, Xavier, but please do not, do not leave the stage, because I have one first question for you. I don't know if there are questions in the chat. I know that not so many people could attend the session, so, Xavier, Xavier, I have a question for you. So, I have seen the super interesting sessions of the Unite Startups. Are you going to repeat these in this semester or maybe in autumn? Have you considered it? Um, not yet, but what we are doing is trying to, to see which type of activities might be relevant or might be interesting for our startup. So we are constantly thinking of new options, of new programs. We are even applying for specific funding to do more activities because um, at the end, I mean, for, for us it's important to establish this, this strategy of, of becoming more and more uh, a network of, of players, of local stakeholders, but also at a European level, because what we want to, um, to share also, it's not only our experience, but our resources, our activities, our uh, services with uh, universities from all over Europe, specifically for, for Uni from Unite Partners. And we are somehow working uh, to see how we can do that in terms of, you know, um, allowing our students or our uh, recent graduates that want to start the business to go to Alto, to go to KTH, to go to Lisbon and stay there for a while. And also the opposite. I mean, it's an exchange initiative and somehow to uh, work together, providing common resources, activities and, and services. My next question is, as a UNITE student, from one of our partner universities, apart from contacting you through the LinkedIn or email, how do I get to know the next sessions or initiatives that you're about to launch within your, let's say, leg of the Unite Alliance, promoting entrepreneurship, supporting the young entrepreneurs? Do I check the Unite website? Will I receive some emails through some newsletter? No, basically we are publishing everything through social networks and regarding the UNITE uh, events, we, we try to also share it through the webpage and maybe uh, if it's something very specific, also through other channels, but uh, mainly through the webpage and social networks, UPC and I know maybe the hashtag UNITE, it's also, it's also useful in this case, but mainly the webpage. Thank you very, very much. So stay tuned. Stay tuned and look at the information periodically. I have one very last question to one of our great speakers. I don't know if maybe Esther or, or Mr. Vilalta, um, is Espanol or Mr. Vilalta. Um, if you have some trick or some advice uh, to uh, our UNITE alumni from our partner universities from Europe, or even for our UPC uh, young students about to graduate or alumni, how, 
how, what could you recommend them or how should they proceed if you're, they would think about moving to Barcelona, they are thinking about uh, prospective opportunities? You have some idea, some advice? Well, definitely they're going to be reached out by recruiters by LinkedIn if they graduate from UPC or from it, on it, any technical um, university. So it's, the path is quite easy for them. But I would say that um, UPC alumni also offers a lot of um, network with um, companies. We also at Barcelona Digital Talent, we do speed datings and hackathons. I think it's a good opportunity to go to all these events and let themselves you know, be visible for the companies. Thank you, thank you very much. So uh, stay in contact with UPC alumni and also reach uh, Barcelona Digital Talent and the activities, mainly the activities, the hackathons, the workshops, all the activities that are organized specially and designed for you. Do we have questions, more questions, no? Okay, so maybe we're ready for a short wrap up. I will be happy to receive Mrs. Nuria Garrido again on stage. Thank you, Berenice. Well, uh, that's it. Thank you very much for all of you to, who has attended this session. This session has been recorded, so um, you will find it published in our channels, and you can, because a lot of information has been given uh, today for our experts, and so I think that, I guess that it's quite difficult to just all of this information, but you will find it because it is already recorded, so we will publish it really, really soon, and you can re review all this uh, video again. So I just want to thank the experts, Xavier, Esther, Esterana, Julie, uh, for all the nice presentations that you have uh, done today, and I hope that you have all enjoyed it. So thank you so much for your help or for attending this session today. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon online.